In this video, I'll show you how to use TrackX from CoreMelt to replace a logo in a panning shot. This clip in the timeline shows a number of beer tap decals, and I'll be replacing one of them with this new logo that's in my browser. Here, in the Generators tab, I'll look for C2 TrackX and drag Track Layer to above the clip in the timeline, then trim it to fit the area where the tap I want to replace is visible. So I'll move to the beginning and then press Trim Start, Option Left Square Bracket, then move to the end and press Option Right Square Bracket to Trim End. Then I'll move back to the middle of the clip where the decal I want to replace is visible. I'll also press M to mark this point in the clip. Now I'll use the Polygonal Shape tool and click once on each of the four corners of the tap decal. With the shape selected, I'll press this button to track backwards. When the shape goes completely out of frame, you might find that the track goes bad. If you see that tracking has failed and you're still tracking, you can press this button to stop an active track, but it's also easy to fix afterwards. With the playhead currently on the frame where there's bad tracking data, I'll click this green dot. From this menu, I can delete the bad tracking data on this frame or from this frame and all frames before it, which is what I want. Where it wasn't possible to track, we'll replace this data manually later in the process. I'll press Ctrl apostrophe to jump forward to the marker I placed earlier, and then press this button to track forwards. As before, the track may go bad when the object completely leaves the frame, and so I'll be ready to press the stop button just in case. But in this case, it looks like the track was fine. Now I'll return back to the original point where I started by pressing Control semicolon. Now I want to load in the replacement label, so I'll click To Surface to get started. Selecting the Title tab in the Inspector and then clicking in the Drop Zone lets me choose a replacement clip. So I'll head to the browser click on my media, and then click Apply Clip. Now, on my marker, I will reposition the corners by moving these corner controls, and you'll see when they move, they'll go yellow to indicate a keyframe has been created. I'll reposition all four corners until the replacement image looks correct. Now, to fix the points at the beginning, and possibly at the end where the track might have gone off, I just need to move back to the very first frame that had a good track, and then reposition the corner handles very slightly to create a keyframe at that point. I'll now press the left arrow key once to go back to the previous frame, which didn't have a good track, and then move the corner handles into the correct position manually. Because it's a little difficult to see them off screen, I'll just zoom out so I can see the position more clearly. Every time you move one of these corner controls, a keyframe will be created on that frame if there wasn't one there already. If you need to jump between keyframes or delete them, you can use these controls below the toolbar. To step between regular frames, just use the arrow keys on the keyboard, and then adjust the corner handles as you need to. If this was necessary, I can do the same thing at the end of the clip as the start. Now, the replacement label still looks a bit bright and a little bit too sharp, but that's easy to fix. I'll press Command 6 to bring up the built in color wheels. To try to make the label look like the other labels, I'll drag the highlights 
down, I'll raise the shadows just a little bit and also push the midtones a bit. And I'll also try to correct the white balance here by just adjusting the highlights down a little further and I think also changing the color a little bit. Now, if you get this wrong, you can change it as much as you like. This isn't fixed. Now, this looks better, but it's still too sharp. I'll return to one track and then I'll press this button here to bring up the tracking options, including motion blur at the bottom of the panel, where I choose high quality and then 180 degrees to match the settings I shot on. I'll press OK and now the replacement decal looks much more convincing. Motion blur will slow rendering down a little, but it won't take too long. Now, if you find the end result still a little bit too sharp, you can open up effects, find blur, and add Gaussian blur to the track layer instance, and set it to two pixels or one pixel if you need to. Track X is available now from Cormelt.com, and there's a free trial too. Thanks for watching.